Hiya. Hello, everyone. Good. Good. What, well, it's evening here. That's some blue sky. Um, morning in New Zealand, if New Zealand's with us. And I don't know, in America. Well, I suppose you have a billion different time zones, don't you? So, is it Chicago? Is that where someone said they were from? Anyway, hello. Happy Sunday. It's, um, well, I suppose, and also, it's confusing, isn't it, trying to greet people around the world? This is why I'd have made a terrible politician. Um, hello. Anyway, I hope you're all all right. Has everybody had a good day or had a good night? I slept terribly. Um, and uh, I've done nothing today, practically nothing. I did a scavenger hunt with my family and I've sat around for the rest of the day and it's been really lovely to just stop for an entire day. Um, I went through the rest of the this book yesterday and um, I've uh, so we've got three more chapters and then I'm writing an epilogue because as I was rereading it back to myself I was thinking this doesn't this isn't the right end it needs more of an end so I'm going to put the epilogue onto the end. Um, and what's everybody been up to? Uh, Stick Gal 6 got popcorn and soup. Popcorn and soup? That seems like a terrible combination. How is, uh, what are the, are the, is the popcorn like croutons? Ooh, I mean, I'm not, ju I'm judging, I'm judging, but you have a great time, but that seems terrible idea to me. Um, pizza dough, hey, well done, human hairball making pizza. Nice work. It's quite it's quite easy, isn't it? Pizza dough to kind of get going, and it's fun. Feels nice, silky. Um, Sean missed yesterday. Had to fight a massive gorse fire. Oh, oh no, that doesn't sound good. On top of everything else, sorry about that. Well, I hope you've caught up. We've got three chapters to go, and then we've got the the uh, um, what did I say? We were going to have two bowls. What two hands is the soup? But I mean, please use a spoon for the soup. I can only imagine how much soup you'll be wearing if you're trying to scoop that in with your hand. <laughs> oh dear! The, is this the alternative queen speech? Do you know what? I just cannot imagine that that woman's got a thing to say that I wouldn't prefer to watch in the Crown in twenty years when they make this series. Um, I don't wish her any ill health or ill will, but I just couldn't give a fuck. It's how I feel about that speech happening. Um, right, shall we read a chapter then? I've been thinking, by the way, about what's going to take over from this, and I'm already starting to feel a bit of pressure that I won't be able to write a novel-type story quick enough for us to be able to do this night on night. So what I was thinking we could possibly do is I'll write short stories and at the end of each short story people listening can like pick up on one thing that happened in that story that is the lead on to the next story happening so they kind of flow on from each other but it's not like I'm trying to construct a novel out of nothing because I'm a bit worried I won't be able to do that um it quickly enough for us reading it every night anyway right should we get on with the story so we're going to go to chapter 38 so at the end of the last chapter the angel revealed that uh, she was someone that had fallen out with God. <clears throat> Chapter 38. The sweat from the sun on Hamish's back turned instantly from the warm consequence of a sunny day to the frozen evidence of inescapable fear. You're the devil. The angel didn't laugh out loud as it would have done if this had received the funding to be a Hollywood movie. She actually flinched and tutted and pressed her hands together in an expression of annoyance. Well, yes, that is me, but I sincerely resent what that name represents. I am who you think I am, but you, who you think I am is not entirely fair or accurate. Who are you then? asked Hamish. I am someone like you, she replied. I am someone who disagrees with God. More accurately, I am the fundamental disagreement with God everlasting and wholly contrasting his oxymoron i am the belief that the earth experiment is a waste of time that it is cruel that it is flawed i am not good what does jesus oh no that's no it's carrying on it's still the devil what does jesus look like to you the devil asked innocently what does he look like he is a uh, tall black Hamish thought hard, short hair, curly, sort of looks like a picture of a black African in a school textbook I had as a kid. Right, 
The devil sat calmly and waited for Hamish to take the bait. Why? The devil thought carefully before proceeding. Was uh, Sarah surprised that Jesus is black? She said. We didn't talk about it, Hamish realised. Isn't that odd? prompted the devil, using the oldest trick in the advertiser's book to nudge Hamish towards the opinion she needed him to have. Let him think that he realised it himself. It was odd now that Hamish thought about it. He'd always thought that if Jesus was real, he would be black, but Sarah hadn't. She would have been surprised. She'd have mentioned it, wouldn't she? Things had been very distant between them, but surely not that bad. Why hadn't she mentioned it? Was the race issue such a barrier between them at the moment that she'd not wanted to discuss it? She fe he felt himself deflating as the immensity of the gulf between them revealed itself in such clarity. He realised he hadn't said anything and tried to muster his thoughts towards a response. Aye, it is odd, he managed. Maybe uh, she didn't think he was black. The devil laid another acetate, of layer, acetate layer of thought over Hamish's mental projector. Hamish's mind's eye whizzed back to that conversation at the pub with Jesus. Can you tell I'm black? He asked the devil. Of course. The devil left it at that. Jesus couldn't, or at least he said he couldn't. Could he stop someone seeing the colour in him too? No. The devil delicately created two syllables from one and let it hang in a sing-song pitch. She avoided eye contact with Hamish, patiently waiting and teasing, letting his confusion and anger carry him forward toward her. So she just didn't want to admit to me that I was right? The devil considered this for a moment. She'd forgotten quite how caught up in themselves humans could be. If you gave them an emotional aspect to an issue, it swiftly became all-encompassing. Could it be useful? Leave... Certainly leaving Hamish on an anti-Sarah path played comfortably into her overall aim of keeping the bet with God firmly in her favour. It wasn't where she had been heading, but it could certainly work. Something was niggling in the back of her thoughts, though, a desire to paint over the brilliant image of Jesus she had suckled on for 2,000 years. The desire for revenge was too strong to leave Jesus out of it. She opened her mouth again. Maybe Jesus wasn't black to her. A fruit machine spin of possible meanings clatter rolled through Hamish's mind and none of them stuck with a winning explanation. I don't understand. Maybe when Sarah looked at Jesus, he wasn't black. Maybe she saw something different. Hamish started to ask the devil how that was possible but stopped as soon as he realised what a stupid question that was. He looks different to people. Didn't you question how much he looked exactly like you thought he would? No. Of course you didn't, thought the devil, the egotism of the human brain. He looks exactly like everyone thought he would. The devil waited to see how Hamish would respond. Was his negative spiral steep enough to carry him all the way down the devil's trap? He looks exactly like everyone thought he would, Hamish tested wonderingly. The devil sighed inwardly, wondering not for the first time in her existence why God put so much stock in a species that repeated things quite so often. What help did they expect repeating to be? He looks exactly like everyone thought he would, said Hamish again, and the devil rolled her mind's eye. So he looks different to everyone who looks at him. He is capable of looking just like you imagined he would to everyone. The devil wondered if Hamish had broken without her noticing and was now stuck on some kind of minimal plane of cognitive function. She considered him. She considered whacking him hard on the, of the concept of just smacking it to see if that might work. She quickly ran over in her mind what she could remember of human anatomy and decided against using her hand. She opted for a simple verbal prompt to try and knock him back on course. Yes. Hamish fell silent again. Again. The devil concluded that he must be broken and wondered how you go about turning a human off and on again. He didn't seem to be whirring at all and nothing had fallen off, but he was definitely not functioning. Her hand twitched to just try a quick smack on the ear. After about 15 seconds, Hamish finally turned to look at the devil. Progress, thought the devil, and eagerly awaited Hamish's words. When it came, it was as simple as it was delicious to her ears. Why? She selected her words carefully, enjoying the game and determined to win. 
The best thing about being the devil was the lack of consequences, but it in no way diminished the pleasure of a victory. How best to gently massage Hamish into freefall? Why, to play like he played, obviously. Why indeed, she repeated lightly, feigning ignorance and allowing Hamish to provide his own explanation. Sims a bit, um, he started, yes. Hamish shook his shoulders out, feeling the chill as the sun set behind him. I don't know, it just, it seems a bit dishonest, I suppose. In what way? asked a delighted devil. Well, I, d I don't know, just if someone turns up looking exactly as you thought they would, then you're more likely to trust them, aren't you? I feel a bit cheated, like he was a bit dishonest doing that, sort of tapped into my own personal information and used it to ingratiate himself. Maybe he does it to help you feel comfortable. Maybe it's to give you faith. The devil had always been her own best advocate. I mean, maybe, Hamish said, unconvinced. It just feels a bit creepy. If he's just what everyone thinks he is, then what is he actually? Is he anything in his own right? That's a million dollar question, Hamish. What is a God without its people? If no one believes in a Jesus, then does he look like anything? Does he exist? Tree falling in a wood, said Hamish wistfully, and the devil all but slapped him for ruining a great stretch of dialogue with such a mundane illustration. Quite, said the devil tactfully instead of slapping Hamish. The pressure of not hitting him was beginning to get one size fits all. Jesus can't be what everyone wants him to be, or it makes him nothing, makes him a fruitless exercise. If he's anything for anybody, then why are they flocking to him? It makes him irrelevant. If he's only ever going to bend to what you want him to be, you don't need to go to him. Or is it? Is that better than being set in stone like a dictator? Or, no, I don't know. Each new thought sparked another in Hamish's mind. His musings were picking up pace rapidly as he turned each new corner of deliberation. The devil decided it needed a slight architectural hand and put on her best relaxed voice. Sarah seems to quite like him. Hamish was too riled up to think before he spoke. Oh, of course she does. She's thrilled to be able to cling to him a little harder. She's so smart, but she's so frightened of being aware of how illogical it all is. The devil poked firmer and further. Now, come on, Hamish. <laughs> how can you think it's illogical now you know she was right? Me, God's a little boy in the dress, we're all real. She was right. No, I don't mean that. You can be real. I, I, I guess you are real, but it doesn't mean the religion was right, does it? We, who decided we were worshipping God, not you? You're not murdering or torturing. You just seem to think differently to Jesus, which actually means you think more like me. So maybe I should be a devil worshipper. What if we back the wrong one? Just because God exists doesn't mean he's earned the right to our adoration. The father of mankind who walked out on us 2,000 years ago like some Jeremy Kyle candidate, but insists we all send a Father's Day card? No. No, I'll walk away from the whole thing. If I do, m more sure than I've ever been that church is ridiculous brainwashing indoctrination. One last feather touch should do it, thought the devil. And... Sarah? Instant tears backed, on, backed up onto the balcony of his eyelashes. An ache developed within a split second across his brow, and the back of his throat stiffened in a high-arched agony. Oh, well, it's over, isn't it? His voice cracked twice, just getting the words out. It's never going to work anymore. You can't make it work when there's something this big between you. I loved her so much. Loved. Hamish looked up and saw Sarah standing 15 feet away from him across the square. The devil smiled. There we go. That is the end of that chapter. Um, John Mothtek, is the devil Alanis Marset? Absolutely not. You have been warned about that. No. She is not. Um, I didn't end up writing it like it, but I thought that perhaps um, uh, the devil looks like the last thing you expected her to look like. 
So maybe in your case, it would be Alanis Morissette. But because Jesus looks exactly how you want him to look, I thought it would be fun if the devil looked exactly as you weren't expecting. Um, so, ah, oh, Sarah's on the cliffhanger. Thanks. Good. Yay. Um, uh, yeah, Jesus' appearance sounds like mental fishing. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Is it comforting or is it dishonest? Mm, which side do you fall on? Um, I'm pleased to be not utterly humiliated by this book. It's, it's like eight years since I started writing it. Or, and I've looked at it occasionally, but when I couldn't get a publisher for it and no one was interested, I just completely gave up on it. But And then, so when I sort of started reading it back, I was like, is this going to be absolute twaddle but it's all right like it's not like it's not brilliant but it's not the worst um right we've got two more chapters and an epilogue to go do, do, do. um yeah eastenders theme tune do 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 this won't mean anything to the non-UK uh, viewers <laughs> but anyway um I hope you've had a good weekend well done for staying in you're all crackers and um and you're excellent I'll see you tomorrow at uh, 8 o'clock. Bye.